In this series, we join archaeologists, divers, historians, and conservators as they work on one of the most intriguing shipwrecks of all time, while facing one of the toughest challenges of their careers, recovering all that remains of Blackbeard's Queen Anne's Revenge. Blackbeard took off with anything that he valued. To succeed, they'll have to battle the site's dynamic and dangerous marine environment. You end up bashing into things. Ever-changing weather conditions. And a fast ticking clock. It's Mother Nature that's gonna have her way. It's a high stakes balancing act to ensure the crew's safety and recover the ship's priceless artifacts in one piece. Safety of everybody involved is paramount. Blackbeard and the Queen Anne's Revenge, a seven-part educational web series. Unusual weather patterns over the past two and a half weeks have kept winds high and steady out of the south. This makes conditions unsafe for a lift. But on this day, the team makes the trip to the wreck site to prep the guns yet again. That's a big one. Hang on! Hang on! Hands up! We're going to get out on site, get hooked up on our moorings. The Dan Moore will be out probably around 8 o'clock. Hopefully by then we'll have cleared the guns, have lift bags on one of them, and be ready to blow it to the surface and swim it over so they can snatch it up. To me, you know, bringing, bringing up a gun again is, you know, was part of that, uh, it was a major firepower of a, a major well-known pirate flagship, you know, Blackbeard's flagship. So to bring up one of his cannon is like grabbing, you know, some of Blackbeard's power and bringing it ashore. And uh, it represents, you know, what, uh, what Blackbeard was all about, and that was his ability to go out and capture ships. Forward! There it is. Whoa, whoa. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yes. Well, what we've done right now is grab two of our moorings. We're going to send a couple of divers over the side to take a look at the bottom, see what the conditions of the guns are. Right now, it looks real marginal for trying to lift guns because of the size of the swell and the frequency of the swell. There'll be no viz, there'll be a surge, so we'll be pushed back and forth because of the, uh, like the actual water movement rotates through these waves, and so we'll be slammed back and forth. Um, and then depending on how strong they are, will be how fast you end up bashing into things. And there are a few things sticking out of the bottom. There's some, uh, a big cannon pile, there's stakes, there's another big wave coming. <laughs> Two cannons loose. And the second one has stuff around the sand. Laurel, can you wiggle your hands around in the um, sand and see if that's compacted or loose sand around the cannons? I'm sorry, this is Laurel. I'm just groping around on the cannons. Yes, it's definitely uh, pretty solid down here. Roger that, steady by. If we don't lift anything, um, we'll be uncovering the cannon. We'll be uh, setting up our dredge for the next opportunity, uh, so that'll just make it easier the next time out. We're standing by to stand by. We're going to bring Dan Moore out, get him hooked up. We'll make the call on an hour, depending on how this swell looks, how the boats ride together, and what we think we can get done. This is Jones Bay RV Dan Moore. Well, Steve, we are on site. Um, but there are five and six footers rolling through here. Roger. Uh, well, we'll be we'll be rolling a little bit, all right. Well, right now the the two captains are talking and discussing the logistics of the weather and the wind and the way the waves are coming. And I think, given the roll and the way the swells are are coming in, we're probably going to stand down the lift operation. Yeah, it's rolling. It's rolling so much, and that gun's gonna be swinging around in the air. Don't you think? I don't know. I don't know. I'm wishing so bad. No, straight up, your assessment. 
That's what you're here Let for. Let me call Steve. Uh, Julia, don't second guess yourself. If you think that's the right call, I'll back you on it. I do. And let's stand them down. This is Jones Bay RV Dan Moore. We don't think that we can do this. We don't want a cannon swinging around in the air and breaking up the cannon or hurting the Dan Moore or the divers. Over. Uh, but I do hear you saying, though, Julep, uh, that especially for the diver's sake, uh, it's really going to be compromising the safety, correct? Over. Yeah, we were, we were worried about the divers up against the hull, the, the uh, cannon swinging, and we were worried about the divers up against the hull. Right, we understand, and uh, yeah, safety is the highest priority, especially for your people in the water. Uh, so you feel uh, no need for us to bother anchoring. No, Steve, I'm oh, sorry. I, we want to do it as badly as you do, but we just feel like it's not going to be safe, over. <laughs> Understood. Okay, well, we'll keep a good open line of communication one way or another, and um, it's always next week. Tried to work the weather window, got out early, got everything set. Guns were buried, dredges were buried, couldn't dig them out before the wind turned around. The weather got really nasty. Swell was too extreme and to try and lift the guns for fear of the divers getting caught between the gun and the hull when they had it on a single wire going on to the Dan Moore. The good news is that Dan Moore has agreed to work multiple days next week, so we still stand a really good chance of getting the guns up.